Hi everyone, my name is Jen, I'm an author and a book reviewer and I fear that I may have jinxed things because in last week's video I talked about autumn and all of the nice autumnal things I was looking forward to doing, walks that I was looking forward to going on and now we find ourselves in a heat wave. Um, so I thought today I could try and summon autumn by talking to you about some books that I've bought recently, some I've been sent for review, things that are coming out this autumn or I'm planning to read this autumn and then hopefully the next time we speak to each other it will be uh, cooler <laughs> as I said in an online meeting earlier today I would like to be wearing a sweater not sweating though I'm actually not sweating because I have hypohydrosis I would quite like to be sweating because that is cooling and that would be nice but alas so this video may be shorter probably will be shorter than a lot of videos recently because um, I need to film this and then take off this wig and put my feet back in a bowl of cold water which is one of my top um, cooling tips if you don't already do it I recommend so let us whiz but not with huge amounts of energy because it's too hot for that through this stack of books that I have beside me and as always everything that I mention I will list in the description box down below. Let us start with probably the most autumnal book that I have on this deck here, which is this, A Guest in the House by Emily Carroll. She has a new book out and I'm very excited about it. Oh, and I should also say there is a fly in this room that I have tried to catch, but it was taking up too much energy to catch it. So if you see him, I'm calling him Steve, if you see him zooming behind me, just pretend you can't see him or give him a wave or something like that. So yes, Emily Carroll has a new book out. She is an illustrator and author. The first book of hers that I read was called Through the Woods, which was a collection of illustrated short stories, graphic short stories. And I particularly love her graphic novella, When We Arrived at the Castle. I may have got that title slightly wrong. I will insert the cover here. It is a queer, horror story kind of loosely based on Bluebeard and I just absolutely devoured it. Devoured being a very good word for that particular book. A Guest in the House is her latest book. It's just come out and this is one story. It's not a collection of graphic short stories. One story all on its own and it's about a woman who doesn't have very many friends, has recently married, has a stepdaughter called Crystal and is happy with the life that she has created for herself. It is a quiet life but she's happy. And it says, but what really happened to Crystal's mother, the artist who no one speaks of? What secrets does their strange house by the water harbour? And what of Abby's old dreams and fears of Lady Grey, the knight and the dragons? A lot of this is in black and white, but then we have some colour plates, which really pop. Here we go. Here's one of those colour plates. Um, I hope that those pages didn't contain any spoilers. I didn't want to look too closely in case they did. I will definitely be reading this one around Halloween time. Another book that's just come out by a writer whose work I've loved before is this. This is Open Up by Thomas Morris. I was kicking myself because I had had his book, We Don't Know What We're Doing, excellent title, on my shelf for maybe five years. And for some reason, I just hadn't read it yet. I think when I got it I was more into reading fabulous magical realist short stories and that is a collection of realist short stories so it just kept on getting bumped by other things and I put it off for some ridiculous reason and then I read it last year and it was one of my favourite books of last year so I won't be leaving this one on my shelf. I will definitely be reading it in September. The reason I love his writing is because it is so good at examining unspoken things in relationships, looking at toxic masculinity, feeling lost in your 20s, not knowing what you're going to do with your life, and also looking at psychogeography, because his last book was about the pull of this Welsh town where all of the characters grew up. Some of them had moved away and some of them hadn't. Um, this, I think, is another realist collection, but I do believe that one of the stories is about seahorses. Um, but I think written in a very realistic way, they just happen to be seahorses. Um, Yes. Anyway, I am sure I'm going to love this. It's only, I think, five stories. Let me check. One, yeah, five stories. So they're quite long, short stories. The blurb doesn't give anything away. I'm sure they're going to be amazing character studies, but I'm going to be reading it really soon. So I will talk to you about it at the end of the month. Another creepy book is this one here called Astral Season, Beastly Season by Tahi Sayate. And this is translated from the Japanese 
by Kalu Almoni. This is about two teenage boys who completely fall head over heels in love with this female J-pop star. And then she murders her boyfriend and they decide, because they love her so much, what they're going to do is tell the police that they did it and take the fall for her. So I'm hoping this will fall into, you know, similar category as things like Idol Burning by Rinasami, um, Y slash N by SE, which I didn't love as much execution wise, but I adored the premise. Um, I'm just fascinated by books that examine online culture. So this one also one I'll be reading in the autumn. Another book by an author whose work I have loved before is this. This is Playing Games by Huma Qureshi, which is coming out. When are you coming out? On the 9th of November. I read her short story collection, Things We Do Not Tell the People We Love, back in 2021, and it was one of my favourite books that year. I love the way she writes about families, especially mother-daughter relationships, but this one is a novel, and it's about two sisters, Hannah, who supposedly has a perfect job, a perfect husband, a perfect life, and her sister Mira, who is apparently, in inverted commas, a bit of a mess. Mira is someone who hates her flatmate um, and is not happy because her sister is very dismissive of her writing she's trying to make it as an author and then one day Hannah has an argument with her husband and this sparks something in Mira and I think she decides to write about her sister and her husband and their relationship it says what can you borrow from your sister and what can be forgiven um I think this sounds like a really fascinating premise so looking forward to that I was sent this from Faber which is another one of their Faber editions I've read a couple of these I have read to Mush by Sven Holm and I have also read Mrs Caliban by Rachel Ingalls which was my favourite and I have They by K Dick on my shelves as well. This one is The Mountain Lion not by Patricia Lockwood <laughs> that is someone who is quoted on the front it is by Jean Stafford. Did I say this series is a series of reissued classics so this was originally published in... Um, 1948 so they reissue forgotten or largely forgotten classics this is also about siblings it's about a brother and a sister called Ralph and Molly and they are sent away one summer to stay on their uncle's ranch in Colorado the blurb says that their time exploring soon becomes tainted by the dark stirrings of sexual desire and a rift then comes between them and their innocent childhoods hurtle towards a devastating end one of the quotes on the back says um, but this is one of the strangest and angriest novels of the 20th century. Lauren Groff said that. Tessa Hadley said it's bitter and strong, dark and poisonous. So I don't know, very intriguing, longer than some of the other Faber editions. So that one is going on my shelf. Next, I decided to give a hyped title a go. This is one of Picador's biggest books this year. It's called The Center by Aisha Manazir Siddiqui. And this is about a woman called Anissa who is jealous of her partner who has somehow managed to learn to become fluent in a language in no time at all. He paid a lot of money to go to this place, the center, and then left being able to speak, I don't know what language he learned, what does it say? He learns Urdu practically overnight. So then he tells her about this place, the center, and she decides that she is going to sign up for it too. You pay so much money to go there. And I imagine it's not all that it has cracked up to be. I imagine there are dark secrets and weird unpleasant things that are going on in this place in order to make you learn something ever so quickly because that shouldn't be something that happens so I'm hoping it's going to be dark and twisted which you know is my fave. I have a couple of non-fiction books on disability here. We have a book by Eddie and Duba called Sipping Dom Perignon Through a Straw, Reimagining Success as a Disabled Achiever, tagline written entirely using my one good finger. Eddie has spinal muscular atrophy and this is a memoir queer memoir to talking about being the only wheelchair user in his class at school and how isolating that was and how that reflects his life now even when he is a global humanitarian and he's giving talks at the UN for instance he still mostly finds himself being the only disabled person or the only person who's a wheelchair user in a room of powerful people advocating for change people who are in the room with him maybe are saying things that he wants to hear and appear to have 
an interest in making change when it comes to disability and activism, but they can leave these topics behind when they leave that room. And Eddie can't because that's his lived experience. And again, that is frustrating um, as well as obviously being empowering. I'm sure that this is gonna be an excellent book and I will be adding it to my shelf. I have also been sent this nonfiction book. This is more uh, an academic book. I'm still super keen to read it. It's called Crip Authorship, Disability as Method, edited by Mara Mills and Rebecca Sanchez. This is a collection of essays. It says, hailing from the humanities, social sciences, education, arts and design, international contributors consider disability as method for creative work, practices of writing and other forms of composition, research methods and collaboration, crip aesthetics, media formats and hacks, and the capital access legal standing and care networks required to publish. So basically essays on disability and writing, disability and creativity, disability and disability studies, and how disability informs research and then how that knowledge is shared. It just sounds super interesting. So again, that one is going on the shelf. Another book I've been sent for review is a collection of short stories. This is The Truth Has Arms and Legs by Alice Fowler. It's a collection of realist short stories, which is my cup of tea at the moment. It's quite short. And I love the top of the blurb, which says, delve into a world of change and reinvention, where relationships are as delicate as turtle eggs and just as easily smashed. Kind of gives me shivers, that. And I don't want to read the rest of the blurb right now. I look forward to delving into this, hopefully in the next couple of months. Next up, we have some poetry. Some of this is linked in with events that I'm doing because my book, Please Do Not Touch This Exhibit, is coming out in a couple of weeks and I'm doing some online events in the next few months, which I will, sorry, I'm just moving because I'm getting pins and needles <laughs> in my legs, which I will list in the description box down below if you would like to come along to any of them. Yeah, so some of these books are linked in with events and some of them are not. The first one kind of is, but I was gonna read it anyway. This is Bright Fear by Mary Jean Chan. It is their second collection with Faber. I loved their first one, which was called Flesh. I think I did a video where I did a deep dive into one of those poems, which I'll link in the description box down below. This is one of my most anticipated books of the year, and I know that it's gonna have poems on queerness, and it's also got poems in here about anti-Asian racism during the pandemic too. This next one is not um, to do with an event, but does it not have the most autumnal cover ever? If we are summoning autumn, may this please help. So this is Burning Season by Yvonne Reddick, and it's looking at the paradox that she finds herself in as someone who absolutely adores nature because her father introduced her to it, but her father also worked in the fossil fuel industry. In fact, I think her whole family did. So this is a collection about those things, and there's also a series of poems in here um, about her father's death when he was hiking. So a series of poems on grief, and I look forward to reading that one. When my book with Blood Axe, blah, 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 try that again. When my book with Blood Axe comes out this month, I'm doing a launch event with two other poets whose work is also being published by Blood Axe this month. And I'm really looking forward to talking to them about their collections and hearing them read from it. It's a free event if you wanna come link is down below, it'll be on YouTube. So you can save that link for the event if you would like. So one of the authors who's doing the event is Courtney Conrad, and this is her pamphlet, I Am Evidence, which has just been published by Blood Axe and won this year's Mislexia pamphlet competition judged by MTS Darker. This is a collection of poems that interrogates the tensions within Caribbean migration, gender-based violence, and national politics. The other poet who's doing the event with us is Nicole Seeley. This is her book, Ordinary Beast, and the blurb says, exploring notions of race, sexuality, gender myth, history, and embodiment with profound understanding, Seeley's is a poetry that refuses to turn a blind eye or deny. However, that's not her most recent book. Her most recent book is this one, and I think she'll be talking mostly about this one in the event. This is the Ferguson Report and Erasure, and this is using the Ferguson Report, which you can see in the background here, but then she is using that as a basis to pick out um, individual letters, sometimes words, to create a poem within the report. And I know that part of this won the Forward Prize for Best Single Poem a couple of years ago. So I'm really looking forward to reading this and then talking to both of them about their collections in a couple of weeks time. And if you would like to come along to that event, that would be lovely, as I said, 
link is below. I've also been sent this poetry anthology by Blood Axe, which I'm looking forward to dipping in and out of. It's called Out of Sri Lanka, Tamil, Sinhala and English Poems from Sri Lanka and its Diasporas. And I'm always keen to read anthologies, especially poetry in translation, which I feel like I don't read as much of as I would like, because it's an amazing way to discover new poets who then you can go and research and fall in love with even more, which is very exciting. This novel looks like a lot of fun. It's also a beast. This is Luda by Grant Morrison, and Grant Morrison is a comics writer. This is a novel about a drag queen called Luda, and one of her castmates, because she's currently in a pantomime, meets with an accident. So there is a new cast member brought in who weirdly looks like a younger version of herself. And and this younger version asks Luda to teach her about glamour and about how to bewitch people, so she does, but then their castmates, I think, start to die. It's set in a city called Gaz Glow. It says it is an intoxicating descent uh, into a fantastical city of dreams and into the nightmarish heart of Luda herself, a femme fatale, a phenomenon, a monster, and perhaps the brightest star of them all. Sounds like it could be a lot of fun. And then finally, a book, and I am going to mention the word Christmas. This is Mistletoe Malice. It's coming out in November. It's by Kathleen Farrell, and this is a reissued classic that Faber are bringing out. Just listen to this blurb. It says, the fire is on, sherry poured, claws are being sharpened. In a seaside cottage perched on a cliff, one family reunites for Christmas. While snow falls, a widowed matriarch tyrannically rules over her unruly brood. Her spinster niece tends to her whims but dreams of eloping, and as more guests arrive, each bringing their secret truths and dreams, the Christmas tree explodes, a brawl erupts, an escape occurs, and their mid-winter madness climaxes. Out of print for 70 years, Mistletoe Malice is a glorious lost gem, a darkly witty portrait of a dysfunctional post-war English family's festivities. I think this sounds brilliant and I look forward to reading it. When the weather gets colder, please get colder. It has quotes on the back from Rachel Joyce and Janice Hallett, which we love to see. Those are all the books that I wanted to talk to you about today. I hope that some of them piqued your interest. If you would like to come along to one of the events I'm doing online in the next few months, that would be lovely. Let me know if you have picked up any books recently, taken any out from the library that you are excited about. What would you like to be reading this autumn when it arrives? Let me know in a comment down below. If you are new to my channel and you enjoyed this video and you would like to subscribe, that would be lovely. And if you like my content and you would like to consider supporting me on Patreon, that would be very kind. Patreon is a place where you can support creators and the support over there allows me to keep creating free content for everybody on here and funds my time making these videos accessible by creating captions and all of that good stuff. Thank you so much as always for joining me and I will see you for another video next Sunday. Bye!